Hey everybody, welcome to Liana James Live again. Here we are at the salon. It's quiet. We're going to have a look. We're going to have a look how quiet it is. Yeah, it's pretty quiet out there. Um, hopefully we'll be open soon. And I'm sure that there's plenty of people that are really begging for their uh, hairdressers to be back in action. But in the meantime, we're going to talk all things hairdressing. I'm here with our lovely Dolly. And you're gonna see her lovely hair soon. I mean, uh, the other day we did a show on the intense ruby reds and all our red series. For those that missed it, I'll just give you a quick summation. I um, was talking about these colors. Whoops, just there. Those three there. Everyone can see that. Woo um, this, those specifically, and I did a few of these foils in this lovely Dolly's hair right here, and I'll show you the result of them. Uh, a bit later on, uh, a bit soon, really. Um, but today, we're also, you're probably wondering why the hell I'm wearing a hat. Um, and that is because I have a myth about wearing hats that I'm going to cover today. Uh, the question is do they help your hair grow or do they help your hair go? Go. So, um, you're just going to have to wait for that and you'll see what the answer is. And that's why I am wearing the hat today. So we, I'll show you the ruby red, and yes, Andy, the ruby red is a beautiful color. And I did three different ways in the hair, so I'll show that in a second. Uh, but tonight's episode actually is also going to be about our lovely range here, our accentuate range. And I've left my mask here. <laughs> um, at least everyone knows I'm doing the right thing, hey? Um, about our accentuate range. Anyone that's got... Uh, anyone that has uh, fine hair, anyone that has issues with shampoo conditioners weighing their hair down, this is the product for you. So wait till we get into that. And for those that have never watched this before and are going to be watching it for the first time, well, I just talk all things hairdressing. Please be interactive with me, ask me questions, or direct message me if you're watching this after the actual show. Um, because I'd like to just answer all people's concerns. Hey, Kylie. Thank you for joining. Um, so, yes, red hair. The ruby red. So, I'm going to use this side first because this is where I use just 6%. So, 6%, I use 6%, 9%, and then I use 12%. So, each of those are stronger as you go up in number. Okay? So, uh, this one here, if everyone can see it, I just did a foil in this section of the hair. Okay, that was with 6%. Now, this is the hair naturally, okay? Pretty dull, pretty normal. This was the end result of the ruby red, just straight ruby red onto the hair. Pretty insane, okay? And that was just with 6%, nothing too crazy at all, okay? Now, at the back here, we use a bit of 9%. The, be the benefit, what I'm gonna show you soon is just, you don't necessarily have to even go with a nine, right? Because that is a little bit more intense, that is a little bit more brighter, there's no doubt about it. You can see the difference between the six and the nine, but it's not that much difference, right? So why stress your hair out with 9% when you can get pretty much a decent color, if not just as good, with your 6%, okay? And then, over here, our last part is with nine. Uh, with 12, sorry, 12%. Uh, again, this is the strongest that we have in terms of peroxide in order to get your hair pretty, pretty red. But again, there's not that much benefit with going with 9%, in my opinion. You know, it's not that much brighter. You stressed out the hair follicle a little bit more, but really, it hasn't really changed that much. And if anything, I would suggest that potentially this color is a little duller. And why that is duller, I'll explain. So what happens with the hair, with your peroxide, is it really pushes open those cuticles. They really open up in order for the color to get in and do its magic, right? So when you, the, the higher the, the vol, the higher the percentage, the more of that is stressed out. It also means that when it comes to rinsing the color, you probably lose a little bit more of that intensity and color if you stress out the hair the wrong amount. So that's why sometimes 9% and actually 6% with these very intense colors could be actually a better outcome for you. So there's a little tip for you. But like I said before, today's episode is really 
all about our wonderful range of Ta da I feel like I'm on a TV show. Hopefully we don't have a runaway uh, a runaway trolley here. Um, but it's all about our accentuate shampoo conditioner. Now you'll also notice that I have, and I'm just gonna turn this in here. I'm just gonna bring this a touch closer, and I am just gonna adjust the camera a little bit more. So you'll also notice that I've got a whole bunch of other products on here. And why I've done that is so I can talk about and co complementary products. So why is Accentuate so amazing? So especially for fine hair, this is really for fine hair. It's very critical that we listen to this pot. So I've, I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna, I've brought actually one from the basin to give an example. You'll see that this is a gel form shampoo and conditioner, okay? Now, the benefit of this being in a gel form like this is that it doesn't weigh the hair down like some of the cream shampoos would weigh their hair down, okay? Very important when you've got really fine hair. And what you're trying to do is make sure that your hair is not too heavy and doesn't become flat, okay? So critical and I think it very important that we use the right products for the right type of hair. That's why this product's amazing. Gel form, not creamy, not heavy on the hair. The conditioner is also very light, okay? It won't weigh your, uh, weigh your hair down. Mm -hmm. That is, again, another big benefit. We also have here Saturate, okay? Now, the Saturate is a pretty cool product. I'm going to show you. What happens? If anyone used to use Revitafoam, you remember that Revitafoam? Well, this is what this is like, okay? Really lightweight mousse, beautiful. Sometimes I just rub it into my hands, it makes my hands feel fantastic, okay? Really, really nice conditioning for your hair. The benefit of a, of a product that like this, that you can pop into your hair at any time, is that it's gonna add moisture, it's an inner foam base like you saw coming out, but it's really just primarily focused on trying to add moisture in the hair. Anyone that has issues with moisture in the hair, this is the perfect product for you, okay? Especially because it's lightness. There's no stickiness to it, okay? Nothing, nothing to stick to. It's not like your traditional mousses. It's purely to hydrate your hair. Very, very important, okay? So we've got the saturate there. That's the full range. When used all together, amazing, these three products. Really, truly amazing. Now... Excuse me, Miss uh, Trolley. I'm also going to go with some of the other products. So here we have some Densify. Again, the, the benefit of the Densify for your hair is that it actually works as a non-tacky gel for the hair, but in a spray form. So you actually spray it into the hair. It actually makes your hair thicker, right? When you spray it, it actually connects to the actual hair follicle itself and it actually makes your hair thicker. It's an amazing product for those that are really desiring that thicker, more fuller hair. And the benefit is that when you blow wave it, you know, some of those old Amplify shampoos and whatever else were really quite nasty. You just pull your hair so much, it was awful. You won't have that with this. Your blow dryer, your, um, your blow dryer, and your brush will just glide through you'll see an amazing outcome when using these two products together. Again, complementing the range of the Accentuate Shampoo and Conditioner. It's there for lighter hair, for finer hair, people that are searching for body out there. The other product that I recommend and complementary in this range is your Sandstorm, okay? This is a Sandstorm. It is effectively like a wax in a spray, spray form. You know that, you know sometimes you really want that wax sort of feeling, but you just, don't have the quite the hairstyle that you can get wax into it and get what you want out of it. That's where this product comes in. It is amazing. Medium to long hair. If you're trying to get that matte, waxy feel, that hold from a wax without using a wax itself, that's where this guy comes into the picture. And I've also got our lovely vapor mist. It's a little bit of hairspray. The benefit of the vapor mist is it comes in this mini vapor mist. Just there. That you can take around with you. Anytime you wish, you give your hair that little bit more of a spruce up, spray it in, happy days. 
Okay, really cool products. You can find them at leandajames.com, well, sorry, ljhair.com.au. That's our website. Jump on there. You can buy whatever product that you need, and we'll get it out to you. Local delivery, free. Now to our myths. Very important that we have our myths. So because it was uh, about thicker hair, because it was about um, uh, effectively uh, how to make your hair thicker, today's episode, I thought it was important that we look at a myth that was all about uh, different techniques to make your hair thicker. So it has been something that I've heard many, many times from either aunties and uncles and even in the salon a few times, that um, apparently by shaving your hair, your hair is going to be thicker. I hate to tell everybody, it's a massive misconce misconception. In 1928, they did clinical studies to disprove the idea that shaving your hair makes your hair come back and come back thicker. Believe it or not. Now remember, ask questions, any myths that you want me to bust, send them through. Uh, but it is pretty amazing that for even in 2021, there are still people that go around telling everybody, shave your head, shave your head, it's gonna come back thicker, it's gonna come back thicker. It is just not true, unfortunately. Sorry for all those people out there that have been shaving their heads time and time again, thinking that their hair's gonna grow back. Second myth is about hats. So the question really was that came through was, does wearing a hat prevent hair loss? Now, I've never heard that before, believe it or not. I don't never heard about hats preventing hair loss so much. Um, but I can tell you this much, that if you wear your hat and it is way too tight, you can actually create hair loss for yourself. There's two problems that occur with it. Number one is when that hat is really tight on the actual hair shaft, you can actually rub against it and start impacting the actual hair shaft itself. It can disintegrate and break off. Not very good. Get a Kirsty. Get a Catherine, and hopefully Dimitri's watching too. Um, again, asking questions or anything that you want to clarify. So yes, wearing a hat can impact the actual follicle itself. Wearing a hat can also get to the point where if you wear it too tight, can actually impact where the hair grows from as well. It can actually cause some of your hair loss. So I never heard of anyone thinking that hats actually help your hair grow. They actually are a detriment to you, especially if you wear them inappropriately and too often. So for me, I say hats off. Okay, I hope everyone enjoyed today's episode. Keep those questions coming in and I'll look forward to seeing you in a couple days time. Bye bye everyone. Oh, and by the way, today's our 30th episode. Woohoo! We're up to number 30 and we're gonna keep going as high and as long as we can because I really enjoy this and I hope everyone out else out there enjoys it as well. See you everyone.